see man to prophetic mantle. So I mean, I'm, that's a, that's a that's a, an amazing gift. Right there. I, I was shocked and humbled. I really was that that this is what the Lord instructed her to do. So I I very much you know and honored by it, and I really act, I cherish it because of the meaning of it. Yes, tide cannot wash out the anointing. I know tide <laughs> is great, but it cannot wash out the anointing. That's so good. So so good. Well, Amanda, that was good. I'm and you know we honor you with that. You um you. you know I don't know if you said such things as you were in that. That's not the way. To, that's not what I'm. You deserve that, I think, is what I'm trying to say. You deserve that. And so we just honor you as well for that. So thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, we've got quite a bit of um, notes here from you that uh, the Lord's given you to share. So I'm going to turn that over to you. So go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. This was from January 27th, 2023. So this is very recent. This word, it's in the past week that this was given. And this is what it starts with. Oh, you leaders, hear the word of the Lord this day. If you choose of your will to abuse your power for purposes that are in direct opposition to the seat in which you so sit. Oh, wait, hold on one second. The Lord has stopped me. I have to pray first. See, I okay. started and he stopped oh, me. Yeah. And he goes, no, you have to pray first. Okay. Yes. Good. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of almighty God with authority come forth in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank amen. you, Lord. I felt something that he goes, you have to pray. So I, 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 <laughs> I felt something weird for a moment and he said, you forgot to pray. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. So we'll start again because it was only one sentence. Sure. Oh, you leaders hear the word of the Lord this day. If you choose of your will to abuse your power for purposes that are in direct opposition to the seat in which you so sit, you shall in this season fall, be disgraced, be shamed, be laid bare before the people that you become a byword and a heifer. For if you so choose to act like rebellious bulls, and that's capitalized, oh. then you shall have a heavy hand of correction brought down on you. Hear the word of the Lord this day. Your aspirations for other seats shall become a curse to you. For you have, wait, have, shall become a curse to you. For your harvest so shall come and tares shall ensnare and choke you. For you are being weighed by the Lord in this hour. All of your corrupt deeds, including the inner rooms of the church where abominations have been committed. He's referencing Ezekiel 8 on this too, I think. Yeah blasphemies on the house floor on the floors of parliaments as you say quote there is no god mm. as you say quote i shall exalt myself for i do not answer to god god does not see that that is a direct quote from ezekiel 8 the, the god does not see so shall the heavy hand of the lord strike you and the ground in which you so walk and shall shake your paper houses that you have so built. It shall shake the grip of your fingers off your seats and positions. So right out of the gate. Yeah, right. Now that's the end because I have the same thing. So I yep. can see that's the end of that yes. section. And on mm -hmm. that, um, do I understand that this was both political leaders and church leaders? Is that what I'm saying? I think this is, yeah, because first he deals in the political arena, the first paragraph. Yeah. And then he starts on the inner rooms of the church. Now in Ezekiel 8, the Lord told him, the Lord took Ezekiel to see like the inner area of the temple to show him all the abominations that were really going on that nobody saw. So that's yeah. interesting because he's referencing that in this. Yeah. Powerful, like, powerful. Earth, then church. Yeah. We have sobering, you know, a lot of, uh, you deliver a lot of sobering words with grace. If I can say it that way, you know, the way that I don't feel beat up, but I feel, I feel like if someone's on the other end of this and they recognize themselves, this would be a time to repent quickly. It, it would be, you know, it's interesting because I've realized in a lot of the words, the Lord has me give the fear of the Lord is through that word. It is. The fear, a healthy fear, we're not talking about, but a healthy fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, yeah. is throughout those words. It's so so I've realized that. Yeah. yeah and I mean, you literally are, um, you know, Amanda Grace, you're a person of grace, but God can trust you to deliver a hard word because you don't deliver it with an attitude. You don't no. deliver it with shame. And But you're, but you're neither are you mincing words. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. Okay. 
Russia and Ukraine, the dogs of war, have been unleashed as each shall so turn over. So he's saying both are going to turn over. Oh. And not one, but two new leaders shall arise. And as the dogs so pursued the body of Jezebel, thus says the Lord, the dogs of war, the dogs of destruction have been released upon you, O leaders, who have made deals in the dark to obtain your seat, including selling the people for silver and stocks and new oil that shall arise. Wow, short and sweet, isn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> to the point. <laughs> you, you know what I find? It's interesting. When my flesh is knocked down, because I remember I wasn't, I was fighting off an infection okay. when the Lord had me stop me and had me write this. When my flesh is knocked down, it comes out with even more power almost because the, my flesh is out of the way com almost completely at that point yeah. because it's knocked down from the, which means the spirit at that moment is very strong. Totally but relate it, to that. Yeah. Some of my, some of my most profound revelations that one I shared, I shared on Kim, on Donate Clement's show that the, I sent a word to Kim years ago. So I was 2011 and he wrote back that night. And he said, this is the single most accurate word I've ever been given. And I was so sick. I had been bedridden for a couple of years. People, did, I didn't, didn't tell people that. But the reason I had the guts to give it is because I didn't care. I just was so sick. I got up and typed it out. So I know what you mean. That's when the anointing can actually come through. So Exactly. And this is when this happened. Well, okay. The next part says, and the spirit of the Lord says this day, the people cry out. Some cry out for a king. Thus says the Lord, the leaders who compromise and make deals to retrieve seats shall not complete the race set before them. You shall not compromise, says the Lord. You shall not. You shall not fight and pander for what I find detestable. For those demons of darkness who serve rulers, the quote pans are waiting in the wings to dance at your destruction. Do not, that's capitalized, take the path man has laid before you, for it shall ensnare you, and you shall come to an impasse. For I, the Lord, shall set the path, and it is your decision, O leaders, which you choose to take. For death crouches at the door of one, and life and favor so lines the path of the other. Um, you, this was the one, more seats, more, th more words about seats. Mm -hmm. People are trying to retrieve the seats. Retrieve seats or keep seats or, you know, doing their things. Places of, I guess they're places of influence, influence, what they've been promoted to or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So. A, a places of influence, um, you know, um, the political arena, maybe, you know, even the church, heads of companies, you know, things like that. Yeah. That arena. Okay. Good. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, they shall come with chains and fetters to bind you. <laughs> And if you bless you, bless you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> they shall come with chains and fetters to bind you. And if you humbly come to me, me is capitalized. I shall break their chains of iron. Their charges shall befall them for they have been doing even worse in the dark behind the door to the inner chamber. Hmm. They have met. Four leaders have met from such committees. And in this meeting, they have discussed a leader swap with each one at the table playing a role. Thus says the Lord, they have discussed shutting down grids and markets and key parts of the country to scare the people and herd them like cattle into their plans. The paper that outlines your points and plans shall be revealed, says the Lord. It shall be by one who has had a yoke of conviction come upon them. It shall surprise you, says the Lord, it shall. And in your meetings, you have discussed sorcery and withholding certain medications and creating shortages to wow. bring forth a false crisis so you can deceitfully come in. The one you, capitalized have anointed, O oh, you who met in the inner chamber and looks to be a hero. Your plans shall fail, says the Lord. They shall crack, shall falter, and bring forth inconsistencies as one deep in the FDA shall overturn such by their change of heart. Wow, intense. And you know, this thing about um, the, the paper that outlines your points and plans yep. shall be revealed. I love that because that's like everything done in darkness will be shown in the light. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be looking forward to that. I mean, it's, I was trying to figure out, is this about the deep stairs or is it just simply about four evil congressmen slash senators? That's you know? what I'm wondering. It almost seems like four 
who maybe have a prominent role in certain committees have met. Yeah. Is what it seems like. Yeah. Uh, from this, we'll see. Because yeah. it'll come out. It's going to come out. Um, but this was interesting because this is kind of the Lord divulging what went on in that meeting. And there, it, it, in a way, you know, like when yeah. Elisha was telling the king of Israel what the king of Assyria was saying in his bedroom. Yeah. Type of deal almost. So love it. I love we'll it. see about this meeting and, and what comes of it and what comes out. Okay. Okay. But the important part of this too, I'll say before I continue, he's saying the one you have anointed. So in this meeting almost... They have somebody they've anointed to sort of push out in into the forefront, yeah. you see? Yeah. And he's making it clear, you have anointed this person, I have not. The one that they were speaking about apparently within this meeting. Okay. And says the Lord of hosts, a well once dry in this season shall suddenly be full. People shall wonder as this occurs, and it shall be a sign that I, the Lord God, am watering the dry areas to bring forth a harvest for my people. That's my people is capitalized. The areas of the corrupt shall have stunted growth as the dry areas shall be watered. The desert shall grow vegetation it never has. For what was left dry, I, the Lord, am calling forth life to come forth from that dry, brittle ground. For the enemy has caused it to become a desert place where little grows. However, this shall spring forth life and what once grew shall grow forth and spread its branches. Branches is capitalized. And the areas where wickedness flourish shall begin to dry up. The well waters shall dry up. Their rhetoric shall dry up and become grainy sand to the people. The Jews who have forsaken the God of their fathers shall become as fools and their lifeless words shall become bound along with their mouths. For in this season, I am dealing with those who have forsaken my word, that's capitalized, and pursued darkness for power. For some, I, the Lord, am wrestling with who were once a part of their order, but now are feeling the yoke of conviction and burden. They shall have a change of heart and shall no longer build the beast, but stand against it, says the Lord. Wow. Now, you and I, this is the only part you and I talked about it beforehand, because I yes. didn't pre-read any of this except this one part. Mm -hmm. And I'll read this part again. It says, the Jews who have forsaken the God of their fathers shall become as fools, and their lifeless words shall become bound along with their mouths. And I said, I'm asking you, which kind of, which Jews are these? So tell, say to the people what you told me. Okay. Which so Jews these are. These are the Jews who, okay, so in the Old Testament, we'll, we'll, we'll give a biblical precedent for this. In the Old Testament... When Israel would totally walk away from God and to go towards pagan things, they would be forsaking the God of their fathers because they're totally abandoning God yeah. completely for in another other, yeah, In other words, this, this has nothing to do with Christianity. This is no. simply they're forsaking the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, okay. that, exactly. Okay. They, are, they are completely forsaking the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and completely walking away You know, to the point where there is no God. You know so what I mean? I, yeah, and so I I asked you then offline, what about Noah Harari? He went up to Mount Sinai and made these fake commandments, said these are the new ones and we're going to replace God. And he's a Jewish man. Are you talking about that? Is that an example? Yes, that's an example of that. You know, I find it so fascinating. His name has the name Noah in it. I know. Because, you know, in the days of Noah is when wickedness had flourished so much that yeah. the Lord had to destroy it. So the fact this is in this man's name, I find to be no accident, but yeah. almost a mark. Yeah, as it was in the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. So it will be, yeah, I love mm -hmm. it. Chris is sitting to my left. You're right. Eating rice cracker mix. We'll go <laughs> I, on. <laughs> I can't hear it, but it sounds like he's enjoying it. Hey, Chris. Oh, you want to say hi quick before I continue the word? Hi. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Can you see me? Okay. Here. There you go. Good to see you. Who would you see you? <laughs> you yeah, good? it's been a while. It's been a while since we were sat down and talked for a long time there in, in Salem when you came to reawaken. So I yeah, I know, Mr. Steve. My goodness, we have to see you again. I know. I need to yeah. come to. I need to come to one of these soon. Been oh. too long. So good to see you, Chris. You too. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> There's Chris's cameo, everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Let me see where, okay, order, yes. Okay, so do you have any other questions about this part here? Yeah, I mean, just so people know, because uh, when you say it's the Jews who are forsaking their God, this is, this is a railing by God against those who know better about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Long before Jesus showed up on the scene, they have right. no excuse. They know who created the world, and they're walking mm -hmm. away. Not only just walking away, but they're they're going to occult occultism and transhumanism and all this and stuff. secular humanism. And yeah, yeah exactly. They're that. going toward pagan things that are wrapped as something else. Okay. So in, in biblical times, you know, you had Baal, you had Ashtoreth, you had Molech, you had all of these pagan things, right? Yeah. Well, these have just been repackaged as other things. So they're still forsaking and going towards all of those pagan ungodly things that God warned them yeah. when he made the covenant not to go near. That's good. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Thus says the Lord, what goes into the skin shall come out of the pores. Oozing sores. Now, this is almost a riddle here. Oozing sores shall break out as silence breaks between those high upon the pyramid of what you call drugs. No. Their pact they made shall be broken, and one at the top shall turn after their own suffers at the hand of ruthless experiments. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. in the same way, we are all being experimented on by many of these drug companies. Intentionally, they're saying someone there is going to turn after they start suffering from their same concoction. That's the way I'm reading it. That they, yep. they they suffer and all of a sudden they're experiencing they're supposed to get off free from this and they're going to suffer. Yes. So positive. after one of their own suffers, it could be a family member. Okay. It could mean a colleague, but whoever this person is is going to be very high up, very high near the top. Then it's going to snap them out of it very fast. Wow. Which is sad that it it has to go to that length. Yeah. But you know, in in this case, it's going to have to go to that length. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Really. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, all capitals. I am God. There is no other. I am the God who called Abraham, who called Samuel, who called Jeremiah, who called John, who called Matthew, who called Luke, who called Mark, who called Deborah, who called Nathan, who called Hezekiah, who called them to be light and a strong tower in me in the days where pagans ruled. And I am calling again, says the Lord. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man answers, I, the Lord, shall come in and sup with him. Many of you have continued in your own captivity of your own making. This is the season laid before you to come out from that captivity, to grab hold of deliverance set before you. For this is a profound season for such to release the captives, if they so choose to be released, instead of staying bound in their cell. For I, the Lord, am giving open doors. You must walk through it out of your cell. For the enemy has bound you many years, and I, the Lord, your deliverer, that's capitalized, have come to free you and redirect your life to merge you into the call that is upon you. An open door, says the Lord. There are two doors, says the Lord. In the capital, there are two doors. In, in the capital... There are two. OK, I see what he's saying here. OK, because it gets a little confusing for a minute. There are two doors, says the Lord, in the Capitol. So he says in the Capitol. Then he says there are two doors in New York. There are two doors in Texas. There are two doors in California. There are two doors in Michigan. Which door uh, which door leadership walks through shall determine their fate for only those who have asked for eyes to see and ears to hear shall recognize the door. I, the Lord, have opened. However, some shall walk through the door of perdition, the, which means destruction. The alluring aroma of power shall be their destruction. Wow. On those, you know, California, Michigan, Texas, and New York, obviously these are among the biggest states in the Union. And Not you know what's interesting, too? He hit points, north, south, east, west. Oh, I did, realized that he? afterward. After he I did. went back and looked, I said, oh, my goodness. He hit a state in every side. It's like four corners, isn't it? In the four corners of the nation, yeah. Yeah, wow. And he's basically saying, you all have a choice. If he were to talk Southern, you all have a choice. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Bless uh, your heart. <laughs> yeah. Bless your heart. <laughs> but they, they have a choice to walk through and, and ask for 
humble themselves and ask for, um, how did that go? Ask for eyes to see or to go and, and double down on power. And God says, you, it's your choice. But basically he's saying you're going to reap what you sow if you, if you make the wrong choice. There are two doors here. And um, it's interesting because the leadership of each state is involved in choosing and what happens. Yeah. So, you know, this is, this is pretty, this is pretty hefty right here. You know, it's kind of like you're at, you're at the fork in the road. Yeah. You know, it, it type of thing. You got yeah. two doors and it's your choice. Yeah. And yeah, the way it's worded is like, he didn't use these, this phrase, but it sounds like he's saying, this is your last chance. That's what it sounds like to me. You know, it, well, he's min not mincing words. I'll say yeah. that. I mean, he's being very clear about this, that yeah. one is destruction. One door is destruction. So if they choose that door, what befalls them is of their own making. Now, can I, because now I can hear people asking this question. So I'm going to ask it for them because this is, I'm hearing it in my mind's eye. Um, does the state suffer or do these people suffer or do they all suffer? Be, what, or do you know? That's an interesting question. And I'm not too sure about that, but do I think the leadership will suffer first because you know, the leadership is what's affecting the people. Yeah. Yes. So I think you're going to see, you know what I mean? Yeah. Leadership suffer first, especially if the people in these States are getting restless you know, yeah, and, 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 uh, and want a turn and want a change and, and, uh, and, you know, things are starting to percolate then yes, there may be a little bit of, you know, pressure or uncomfortability for the people, but you're going to see the leadership who's supposed to be the shepherd. Well, you know, what That's pictures in my head is, I think it was a Romanian dictator Ceausescu where the people finally stormed his place, dragged him out and they killed him right there in yep. the public. That, that's an, at least an allegorical example of if you choose the wrong door, the people don't want to suffer anymore and they may come after mm -hmm. you. And I'm not, I don't want to put words in God's mouth here, but I'm just saying that popped in my head because there's a lot of people in these states who are praying and praying mm -hmm. and praying. And God is, I, I don't think God's saying, I'm going to, if they suffer, you all just get used to it. You're going to suffer. I don't think God's, that's God's heart. But he might allow them to take things into their own hands. That's just me. So I better, I'm going to stop short of, I don't want to put words in God's mouth. Well, sometimes the Lord allows things to purposely get uncomfortable. Yeah. So there has to be a change. Yeah. You know, so there are times we have seen that where the Lord has allowed things to get, you know, not the most comfortable because that's what causes change. Yeah. Those are the seeds being planted of change. Comfort doesn't bring change. When you're uncomfortable, you want to change something. Yeah. So we have to keep that in mind. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. okay. This is the last uh, paragraph. No, it is I, the Lord God, who have spoken to you this day. As spring approaches, renew your hearts unto the Lord, for there are many that shall bud and flourish, for they have planted in good soil. Their accelerated growth shall spring forth in the spring into a prolonged summer. As I, the Lord, cause to grow and be uprooted the diseased trees and their branches that have become dry and brittle. One branch shall see total collapse, for I, the Lord, am the righteous judge. And my word, that's capitalized, goes forth this day, ratified into the earth. Thus says the Lord of hosts in the name of Jesus Christ, my capital son, your advocate and savior. Amen. I got to ask about this because, you know, the, the, the terminologies the Lord is using is judicial. You know, I'm the righteous judge. Ratified is, of course, that's actually the ratified is something that the legislative branch does. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like he's talking about the branches of government. But I, I, I don't know. What do you think the branch is talking about? It almost looks that way because he says one branch shall see total collapse. And yes, there, one branch you shall see. You may see an entire mess made. Uh, in that area, you yeah. know, where things have to kind of be uh, in a way rebuilt or redone or, you know, fortified or something of that yeah. nature. Um, but yes, in, in our, you know, in our society, we have the branches of government, the three branches of yeah. government. Um, so this is going to be interesting because he's talking about diseased trees. So mm -hmm. when a tree is diseased, you know, you not only have the branches that are diseased, you have the trunk of the tree many times. That gets the disease also and extends into the branches. Yeah. So this is extended into the branches, this disease. And now one of the branches has become so brittle, it could just fall right off. 
Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know sometimes I I have to watch how it plays out and what's going to happen because the way the Lord says it is almost like, I don't want to say it's, it's a riddle, but, but he speaks and he spoke in parables and scripture and he yeah, speaks, yes. you know, the same way. And so sometimes you have to watch to see. And then I mean, yeah, the Lord's that's... it's like the Lord's methodology. You got to love it or hate it, but he's, he speaks in forked tongue. He speaks in riddles. He speaks in code. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter in code is what that means. And it's the glory of Kings to search out the code and the meaning of the code. So, us even talking about this is is God's like God saying, "Good, that's exactly where I wanted you to go. Dig, dig, dig. See what you get out of it." I mean, that's the way I see it. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Well, it, it you know it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, and sometimes the Lord does. I mean, there's there's different reasons, but I mean, sometimes the Lord does it because why? He wants us to seek a matter out. Mm-hmm. He wants us to gain deeper understanding. And so by seeking it out, we gain deeper understanding. And by him saying it in that way, when it does happen, we start to learn how the Lord speaks yeah. and what he means. So it's a teaching tool for him as well for us. Yeah, and it, gives, it just, it's the glory of God for for both things, for him to hide a man and the glory of kings to seek it. He, to me, the God I'm learning about is a guy that gets a kick a good kick out of us digging and searching the scriptures. The Bereans were more noble than everyone, all the others, because they searched these things out to see if they were so. And he loves that. He loves to get us going and seeking out what is it that God really wants here? What's he saying? So, Yep, it's true. And that's how we learn. Yeah, good stuff. So it's important. All right. Well, um, that's really good. Anything else you want to add before we get into some prayer here? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> then let's go ahead and pray for the viewers and see what God will show you, Amanda. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, mm. we come before you, Lord. We praise you that you are God. Mm. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your name. Father God, we humble ourselves before you this day, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, Mm. so you, your will, and your power become more in our lives. Lord, we acknowledge you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to the earth, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He died at Calvary. That blood dripped onto the mercy seat. It purchased us by the shedding of his blood. We were redeemed that day, Father God. Reconcile back to you. Father, we praise you. He rose again in three days and sent it back into heaven, took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore. And we just praise you for that and honor that before you this day. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence in the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, Father God, to fill this place, to fill this broadcast, Father God, that your presence would move, that the weight of your glory would fall, lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Father, we just praise you. We give you all the glory. You sit on the highest throne, Father God. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, Father. And Lord, we just come before you this day. We bring the people before you this day, Father God. Father, we pray, Lord, in this hour that they would be equipped with every good and perfect gift that comes from you, Father God, in order to do the mission at hand that they have been given, Father God. We ask in this hour in Jesus' name that your people not be ill-equipped, Father God, but in this hour they would come into submission and you would equip them, Father God. You would put your armor on them. You would firmly plant their feet. You would order their steps, Lord, and you would propel them and compel them because some of you out there need to be compelled. And I'll explain what that is in a minute. Compel them into the call, Father. Lord, when Jesus was baptized, he was then compelled by the Holy Spirit. He was pushed into the wilderness. He had to go through that period of testing. Mm before going out for you, Father God. And some of you out there have been avoiding the compelling Mm. because of the process. And the Lord is saying, you have to submit to the compelling to get unstuck from where you are. You have to submit to it and you have to allow the Lord to compel you 
into the process and be refined. You cannot circumvent the process. The Lord wants you to know that in this hour. You can't circumvent it. It is a necessary for you to carry properly what the Lord wants to give you. Uh, and some of you out there who are looking to be, you feel stuck because you need to be delivered and set free. We're going to pray for you right now because yeah. the Lord is our deliverer and he wants to deliver and he wants to set free and he wants to unbind you and untie you from what the enemy has bound you up with. So father, in the name of Jesus Christ, father, we just ask Lord in your name, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that you would untie these people. We rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. We apply the blood of Jesus that says by his stripes, they are healed father. And actually there's somebody out there that has a rare blood condition and you've had it for quite some time. The Lord is cleansing your blood by the blood of his son. He is literally cleansing your blood and he is bringing your counts back up. If you lift your hands and receive it in Jesus name, because it is your faith here. That's going to make you whole. It is your faith that will make you whole. And I believe it's a woman who has this blood condition. Mm -hmm. um, and it is hindered a lot in your life. The Lord wants to deliver you out of this today. He wants to set you free today. Receive it in Jesus name, because this is your get out of the boat moment. This is, is your chance right here allow your faith through jesus christ to make you whole right now thank you lord and you know you said when he wants to bring your counts back up you're talking about blood count and as you said that this person if there's only one or there may be more the lord is adding wants to add years as well he wants to add years to your life some of you said i always thought i would have a long life i had been told i'd have a long life and now i have this when but amanda said he wants to bring your counts back up he's talking about two things your blood count and your year count but you got to step out of the boat thank you lord there are some of you out there right now and you've been stolen from mm. either through fraud or through wills, one of you have had something stolen from you because a will wasn't followed and executed because of greed. Some of you have had job opportunities stolen from you, from people that have wanted to sabotage. The Lord in this season is causing to be returned unto you what was stolen. Sevenfold has to be given back for what was stolen from you. And if you will have faith... And you will trust the Lord and you will hold him to his word. His word is binding. If you will hold him to his word, what you have lost will be graciously multiplied back onto you. Don't look at what you lost. Look at the father that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That can give you back what was wrongfully stolen from you. Forgive whoever did it and move on. The Lord wants to return it onto you this day. He doesn't want you to fester with it. He knows what you lost and he has the capability to give you back so much more. It doesn't matter. Whatever they took in the past, whatever they did, the Lord will deal with them for that. It is your job with the eyes of faith to see what the Lord is going to give you for your faithfulness. So receive that today. Don't let it fester. Bitterness wants to set in and bitterness yeah. is going to prevent anything else from growing in your life right now. Some of you, have it has already taken root. The Lord wants to pull that root right out. In the name wow. of Jesus Christ, we rebuke that root of bitterness right now. We command it to come out of these people that it is untied and loose from their soul right now in the name yeah. of Jesus and cast back to the dry places and pits from which it came from to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return or have anything sent in its place. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and that's what I can add to that. I just think, you know, that the Lord wants you to release, and I'm just saying the different words of what Amanda's already saying, release to God divine re retribution, and don't ask for divine retribution to the enemies that stole from you. Loose it forever. Don't care, no longer care about getting exacting revenge or exacting an ask for forgiveness or being caught the Lord will repay you back sevenfold another way, not from them, another way. So don't look for it to come from the people that stole it from you. It's not going to come that way. 
up my shoulder. The Lord is healing people right now of infections and flus that have kept you bedridden right now. The Lord mm. is touching you and healing you. It is coming out of your body. It is coming out of your pores. We are calling it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. It cannot continue to fester in your body That's anymore. Right. We rebuke that infection and we rebuke that flu. And we command you right now, come out in the name of Jesus for that fever to break in the name of Jesus. Jesus touched so many people that had fevers and they broke and left that very hour. We are commanding it in the name of Jesus Christ to depart from these people this very hour and for them to be restored in Jesus' name, that this isn't going to be something that is drawn out anymore. But in the name of Jesus, we are speaking forth healing and wholeness be bound to the bodies of these people in the name of Jesus in order in their bodies, Father, that they will not feel hindered that they will not be able to be in a, in a weakened state where the enemy could try to capitalize on such, but that they, they are healed and whole and restored mm. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. There's somebody out there, you've been battling like this really, it's like an inner ear problem. It's all the way in your inner ear. I don't know if something was malformed, but it, it causes um, all sorts of symptoms, especially dizziness. You tend to get nauseous easily. And the Lord is going in. Lift your hands right now and proclaim it in faith because in Jesus' name, he is going in and correcting that inner ear. Your equilibrium is going to be balanced in Jesus' name. The inner ear will be corrected. Uh, whatever has narrowed, the Lord is going to widen it. Whatever needs to be put back in order, he is putting back in order. And that dizziness and nausea that has been so debilitating is departing from you right now in Jesus name. This is going to be a big change in your life. And the Lord wants you to proclaim this work because your doctors are going to wonder what happened when they look in your ear. And that is going to be your chance to tell them too about what the Lord has done for you. Mm. There's an atheist that's been watching because the Lord's been talking to me about this. You have been watching and you have been stewing, but you can't seem to shut off Elijah's dreams. You can't seem to shut off um, other broadcasts that have to do with the Lord. Even though you stew over it, you can't seem to shut it off. The yoke of conviction is coming on you. This is your valley of decision because what's wow. coming up in your life for the next two months, you are going to need the Lord for it because man will not be able to help you with this. Secular humanism will not be able to help you with this. There will not be anyone but God that will be able to help you with this. In fact, you're sitting on your couch. You've been watching it from your phone. And you have been stewing over it. And you've done this multiple times. This isn't the first time you've watched. The Lord is calling to you this day to surrender. He is calling out to you. This is your valley of decision. You come up to, you come on to the Lord now, humbly. You don't have to have all the answers now. You don't have to know everything now. You have to submit now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to be spared from what is coming over the next couple of months. Uh, Amanda, step out on this, but do you feel like leading that person to, in a prayer, how they can yes. pray? We can do that. Okay. Yeah. So if this is you and you've been hearing this, this is what I want you to say, because this is the beginning of a relationship. All relationships have a beginning. That's good. And so what you're going to say is, Father God, I come before you this day. Because he is your father. You just don't realize it yet. I acknowledge I am a sinner. That your son, Jesus Christ, did come to the earth. And he died for my sins. So I would not have eternal separation from you. Right now, it says in your word that those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am calling on your name, Lord. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I am asking you this day to come into my heart and to my life and to be my Lord and Savior. 
that from this day forward, I surrender to you to make me a new creation in Christ. In Jesus' name. There is the start wow. of your relationship with the Lord right there. Coming to him plainly and, and wholeheartedly. Because that's what moves the heart of the Father. When we come wholeheartedly to him, that is what moves his heart. So if that was you, uh, even though I don't know your name, I will be praying for you yeah. um, and asking the Lord to, to continue to just help you because there's a lot of layers here that go back to when you were younger that the Lord's going to have to peel off now. Um, and some of it's going to hurt, but it's got to come off because it has driven a giant wedge between you having any relationship with anyone. Hmm. And the wow. Lord's going to remove that. Your whole life is going to change if you have surrendered just now. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank Powerful. you, Lord. Powerful. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Praise there's the a, uh, yeah, oh. to that person, we just say, Welcome to the uh, family of God. You just be joining the family of God. So we welcome. welcome you. Write to us if you if you are so inclined. Let us know that that was you. So we'd love to hear about that. Love to hear about that. Well, Amanda, very, very good. So meaningful and full and ah, awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Um, do you have anything you want to announce uh, and tell people how to get a hold of There is a speed bump on the front. There is a speed bump on the front.